In this video I will talk about my experiences with uh, BSL by Spartan Law Samson, which was my dog, an Irish Staffordshire Bull Terrier. It's not one of the dogs that you see walking in front of me, those are Petterdale Terriers. And this uh, dog is no longer among us, but I just want to uh, give you a little bit more of insight of the procedure and experience I had with uh, my beloved uh, Samson dog. Normally we call them Sammy, shorter name, it's nice to uh, use as well. So getting back to the topic, um, I was looking for a dog and I wanted uh, a bull and terrier type of dog. So my shortlist was the Petrodel Terrier that you see here, the Dogo Argentino and uh, the American Pitbull Terrier is also a dog that I really like, but I could not have that because at that time there was uh, a rule against certain breeds, breed specific legislation. And in the Netherlands it was called the RAD, RAD, which stands for Regeling Agressive Dier. So it's like a rule for aggressive animals, and the uh, American Pitbull Terrier was uh, mentioned among them. which meant that they were illegal to own at the time. And all other dogs that had no pedigree were also illegal to own if they had <coughs> characteristics that resembled that of a pit bull, which were an extremely broad. So a dog without a, a FCE registered purebred breed pedigree that had looks uh, like uh, a bully type of dog, American pit bull, even bulldog type of uh, characteristics. There were people that had a half mastiff, half pincher that were at risk. And not only at risk, they were even losing their dog. So if that is the case, even if you look at this uh, dog, which is not an uh, American pit bull terrier type of uh, dog, and completely not one of the um, dogs bred for dog to dog combat you could see that uh, someone could say for example this petrodel terrier male that you see there has some characteristics he does not have fce registered pedigree he does have a working pedigree of course and being a pure petrodel terrier but you would say okay there's not fce registered petrodel terrier is not the fce recognized show breed so therefore he would be at risk to put under the pit bull law. Mm. That was, of course, terrible. And if that is the case, therefore the Petrodel Terrier at that time was removed from my top three list. So at no fault of its own as a breed, but because of uh, yeah, discrimination of certain characteristics, external features to be classified as such. That's the same reason that the uh, there were also some band dogs on my list that I really liked. For example, the American Sentinel K9 program that was at the time the Chimera Kennels still was on my radar, but similar things would be uh, problematic there. Because also no FCE registered breed, of course. <coughs> that being said, if you look then at the remaining breeds, the Dogo Argentino, which has, has a FC registered uh, breed profile it was quite a good dog but also quite a big dog and then you had the Staffordshire Bull Terrier which was <coughs> a lot smaller dog and why might you say why didn't you look into the American Staffordshire Terrier that would sit nicely in between and you would be right but I have a reason for that. American Sepsi Terrier has been bred uh, for show purposes and also less working capability for quite a while now because they have a working breed very close uh, next to it, being the American Pitbull Terrier. So in other countries they just have a choice between a working dog, American Pitbull Terrier, and a show bred dog, which would be the American Sepsi Terrier. Then if you look at the smaller nephew, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier, they are all 
uh, capable to be registered as a stuffed chabutari, but you also have working lines there. So working lines, and in uh, more specific details you have lines from the Irish uh, strains. So the Irish lines, let's cut a long story short, in Ireland they still have to test us more, a test to see if the, game, the dogs are game, and they kept it for a long while after the red legislation was there that you normally not uh, would not find dogs that have uh, I mean, tried and tested in combat but they tried and tested them not in canine combat then but then against badgers and badger is a formidable uh, opponent and if so you still have a lot of different more character that uh, dogs so if those are available why would I go to another breed because uh, the reason why I like the Dog Argentino over other uh, dogs that are, have a little bit of similar build. Alana Española at the time was not FCE registered, but also a nice dog. Cana Corso is a nice dog, but has uh, no FCE registered uh, characteristics. Then you had the Dogo Canario, Presa Canario. I uh, like the Presa Canario more, but was quite hard to get. And also those dogs, uh, in my opinion, we're a little bit too much on the heavy side. So I like a dog that's very agile and not uh, getting too much bulk. Well, the bulk is of course intimidating, but therefore I did not want the dog. And also Fraser Canaria was very, uh, how do you say this, guarding. And I wanted to have children as well. So if childs uh, come over to play, I wanted to make uh, sure that it would not intimidate my guests, but also would not be a danger. So therefore, Dogo Argentino was a very nice breed. FC registered, very fit. You could still get them from the whole hunting lines. But there was also a few uh, problems with it for me. And those problems were not big, high, but they are there. One of those problems is that the, the dog, of course, is a lot bigger. And bigger can be better, but for me, I don't need it that big size of the dog. The other thing is that it's quite hard to get uh, working lines, so you have to import them at that time from Argentina to make sure to, you get the good ones. There was also California catches which had uh, good dogs, but still would be quite costly. And the third thing, the most important thing, is that they have so much prey drive that they are known to also chase children. Not in the batting, but you should not uh, yeah, just flee away because it triggers it, especially if you have uh, a lot of screams or high pitched noises. So I didn't like that. And they are known that they bark uh, a, li a little bit more than the Irish Tough Shibu Terrier. So, long story short, Irish Tough Shibu Terrier it was. And then I wanted to know which line is the best. So they are. Essence. Three lines of Sefti Bull there are a little bit more that are of Irish lines. You have the Psycho Northford strain, then you had the Dublin Red strain, and the O'Flynn strain. O'Flynn strains are quite rare. Dublin Red dogs are predominantly the red, and the Psycho strain dogs or Northford strain dogs, but they are predominantly white. You also had the on the Shield Boys type of dogs, which are a little bit more racy at the time. So, a little less bulky and also oftentimes a little bit uh, smaller at the time. And I like the dog too, because I chose the smaller dog to go for the bigger ones. And therefore, uh, I also heard a lot of good things about the Psycho line. And there was a, a subline in that named uh, Jocko. Joko was one of the biggest dogs they had, so I sold a dog very close uh, to the Joko line, and therefore I got a, a dog that was the half brother, half sister mating of, uh, yeah. and the dog they went back to that dog that is both on the uh, Dom and the sire side was a male which was the son of Jocko but also grandson of Jocko so that made it quite tight Jocko blood and also the other routes that they uh, had 
at, for example, uh, Rocky, my dear, in this is also a chocolate type red dog with a doctor. So then there was this was uh, one of the earliest litters of that dog that was both a son and a grandson of uh, a Jocko, the Judas dog. It was earliest bred to a dog in the Netherlands. And that was the father of my dog. And his latest breeding was in the dog uh, in the UK. And it was a Joko type pitch as well, so that was quite tight. So three quarter uh, Joko bread and one quarter Dublin bread with a pinch of O'Flynn in it. And the dog that I chose, the GFL Samson, was a dog that completely, uh, not only genetically had so much Joko, but also in its features had a lot of the Joko uh, characteristics. Also big, big bones. Very nice, very nice temper, and that dog uh, stayed with me all the time through all the hardships. Such a nice, loving dog, easy because he uh, was not problematic with food. Accommodations was easy with all humans. All humans were seen as uh, gods to him. He was had not an ill uh, temper against humans. Not at all. The only thing that he did not want was that a uh, person would attack his humans. That's the only trigger that could get him so far. Or he did not like, but he would not attack, of course. But uh, he would not like that you would uh, cuddle him very hard around his neck because that would restrict him a lot. So it just showed you that he didn't like that. It was not a big problem. And that, uh, that dog would just uh, try to escape it and would uh, push your heart away and would make some noises, but nothing serious. And he would, of course, bark if something was amiss, something try to break in on the porch or touching your uh, car at night. But that was the only reason that he would normally bark. He was very nice with females, also very nice with pups or old males, but if they would encounter a, a fit other male, he would be very uh, yeah, challenging, so to say. So that's also a thing, once he uh, went 10 months and a stray dog, yeah, there was a dog of an owner, but he, he just had this dog uh, went astray, tried to attack me and the dog, and yeah. He had a little bit trouble getting uh, <laughs> Samson off, and I, uh, of course, saved that dog. But uh, the thing was, I did not have a breaking break stick at me at the moment, because I thought it was only 10 months old. And because he didn't want to touch me, the Samson dog, he released him, but reluctantly. So I had to pry it with my hands into the mouth of uh, the Samson dog, and then he would make room for my fingers. But that's something I wouldn't recommend, because if you have a dog that will bite down, you will lose, of course, ligaments, fingers, etc. But at the time I just did it, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. And I pried it out, did what I did, and saved the dog as such. And even though the other owner came in after a while and started Starting kick, started kicking uh, my Samson dogs in the ribs, he would not let go by himself. So I had to calm the other owner, I also got a little bit of help of another Staffordshire Bull Terrier uh, owner. That's a good thing, uh, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier world can be very tight and nice, but he also so much uh, into the gossip and drama, which I don't like. So that's also a drawback from the Staffordshire Bull Terrier world. The other drawback is that it's quite hard to get working uh, stock at this moment because there's a difference between the dog that's from working stock and the dog that comes from also working parents. And there was uh, hard things that you get a stigma with this type of dogs because they're still from a, a fighting breed and some uh, restrictions are put upon you if you, for example, go to. Uh, uh, other countries, for example Germany, 
North kind of Westfalen have quite uh, tough legislation, which could hamper you a little bit. And also when you take, for example, bed and breakfast, some dogs are not so much accepted and others are. And persons will ask you about the dog and then even don't think it's a, a, a kind of a fighting breed, but once they know, they get just cannot think uh, straight again. So it's one of the best, if not the best, dogs uh, around humans, but the stigma is still real. And that dog served us 13 and a half years. We let him get, uh, go, so I put him to sleep when he uh, started to suffer. But even then, they, uh, it was a dog of around 20 kilograms in the fit shape. And they put in for 40 kilograms of, uh, yeah, stuff to make him go to sleep uh, permanently and he would not go so they had to put in for 80 kilograms um, almost four times the weight of the dog to let him uh, slowly go away so even though he was suffering he still had the heart of a fighter hope you like this video have a great day